Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Eugene Capers Field and Medical Friday Football. Now, please direct your attention across the field to present your 2022 Medical Colts Marching Band. The band is under the direction of Mr. Ricky Harvey. Staff includes Mr. Darren McCon, Greg Starkey, Michael Loomis, Robert Moore, and Alice Mashew. The band is being led onto the field by Senior Field Commander Amy Harper. All right, let's get up on your feet and cheer for your Colts Marching Band as they perform the fight song, Charge On. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to please remain standing for the play of the Medibert on the monitor.
Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the Never Quotes Marching Band. With the 21st anniversary of the 9-11 attacks on our country on Sunday, the officials tonight are wearing red undershirts to participate in the Anvets Riders National Program to wear red on Friday. Red stands for Remember Everyone Deployed. The officials for tonight's contest are U.S. Army and Gulf War veteran line judge Lamar Goodman, referee Mark Dotson, head lineman Christopher Amita, Back judge Jared Vaughn, umpire Walt Fossil. The athletic department welcomes you to tonight's varsity football game between the Ceramics of Crooksville and the Coach Meadowbrook. And thanks each of you for your support of high school student athletes. The athletic department would also like to thank all of our different sponsors, booster members, volunteer workers, and community members to help make tonight's game possible. The next athletic booster meeting will be this Monday, September 12th, in the high school cafeteria starting at 7 p.m. If you are interested in helping out with athletics, feel free to come and join the meeting. And you too can be an athletic supporter. Thank you. 
Good evening and welcome to the campus of Meadowbrook High School at Eugene Capers Field. We're week four of the high school football season as the Meadowbrook Colts are hosting the Crooksville Ceramics in the first game of the small school Muskingum Valley League action. We've got Caleb Graham producing the show tonight. Carson Todd uh, down on the field getting pictures for us. Mm -hmm. I'm Darren McCullough and with me the KGP reigning rookie of the year color analyst and former Meadowbrook quarterback the one and only Kyle Wendland. Kyle uh, welcome to the first uh, first uh, live stream of the year for you. It's great uh, to be back. We're uh, we got ourselves a big ball game two teams that have uh, kind of fallen on some hard times and some struggling uh, offense here uh, through the first three weeks uh, but both teams are looking to try to pick up that first win tonight. Yeah through the first uh, three games Maribrook has scored a total of 14 points and Crooksville scored a total of six points. So hopefully there's more offensive firepower. I know as analysts up here we like to see some uh, offensive firepower and some touchdowns. And the, the things that I mentioned in the pregame show about Maribrook the two key words was that I said was consistency and finishing. Meadowbrook's done a pretty good job from 30 to 30 of moving the ball at times, but it seems like with the young team they have, they kind of have a penalty or or a, a little bad snap or a hit, miss an open guy or miss that one block that could have sprung Bop or another runner free. And it just seems like that one little one little teeny mistake kind of puts them behind the eight ball a lot of times, and it's also been the first three weeks. Well, the key is just don't get frustrated. Just keep trying. Keep going out there. And, um, you know, you might not get the block this time, but get the next time. And you might run the wrong play. Just get it next time. Just keep pursuing. Just, uh, like you said, just be consistent. And both of you, some people may be wondering out there, is like, didn't Crooksville play at Meadowbrook last year? And shouldn't this game be at Crooksville? Technically, you are correct. But last year the game was scheduled to be at Crooksville. But uh, Crooksville had field issues where uh, their field was at the uh, Village Park in Crooksville and it was unplayable last year so they were the road warrior ceramics last year now this year they do have a new uh, facility that's right there by the high school that looks very nice and they had the opportunity to christen it the uh, first week of the season in a loss to Waterford but uh, these two teams kind of match up uh, well here tonight obviously we know the records are 0 and 3 but uh, both come in with kind of some younger guys that they're looking uh, to kind of develop and hoping to see step up and make plays for them yes yeah, all thing uh, again how reliable internet is or not, but uh, say in a while, Crooksville has not had 7th and 8th grade programs. Well, they have 7th and 8th, 8th grade programs. You look at Meadowbrook's 7th and 8th grade programs, and they're doing really well this year. So, like you said, the future is coming. I just got to get there. And, again, not discounting this year. Again, there's still a lot to play for. Like you said, start of the small school MVL um, starts tonight. So, we'll see what's on tap. And we are ready for the opening kickoff as Meadowbrook is going to receive... And kicking off for the ceramics, can't quite see the number. It's going to be 23, Andrew Willison. Colts not expecting him to kick it very deep as they got two guys back at the 20. And it goes to about the 26 as the Colts retrieve it and taken down at the 30. Number 15, Noah Farley on the return for the Colts. That was a good tackle by uh, number 25, Christian Browning for Crooksville. Just came in and submarined him. So Meadowbrook possession here. First quarter action. Five seconds in the week four. Amazing that uh, we're already in week four of the season when uh, it seems like we were just yesterday we were talking about the season opener and getting ready for preparations and everything. And uh, we're already uh, three games deep and we're on to game four. Medwick the snap, handoff to Bob breaks one. Can't quite break the second one and gets about a gain of two. I'll tell you, number 75, Casey Clendang there for the Colts. Had a good block. He stayed with it uh, until Bob was tackled. And, of course, uh, I, for the size of uh, Sam Bob, it seems like he breaks more tackles than about anybody. Uh, he's a big man and a small body for sure. And did the, yep, and the Colts got their... Uh, Patented play, get the offsides call here on Crooksville. So it's going to turn a second and eight to a second and three as uh, 
I'm looking at the scoreboard, and it says second and 78. So <laughs> they would have 70, though they wouldn't even have 78 yards to go. So uh, well, it, it is not second and uh, Columbus. It's uh, only second and three. As here's a handoff again to Bob. Gets to the outside, breaks another tackle, picks up the first. He's down about the 43. So that's going to be a gain of six for Bop. Yeah, that's a good run by Bop there. Is able to bounce off a couple tacklers and pick up the first down. So maybe that should be our thing that we track tonight. How many tackles will Sam Bop break? I'd say the key for the game is definitely get him going. Get him 100 plus yards and uh, Colts will be looking pretty successful at the end of the night. Yeah, and obviously uh, he's the guy that everybody's been keying on all year. They, they know he's the number one option and Medbrook's making sure that people know as they give to him a third straight time as he picks up another three yards on the dive up the middle. Yep, keep feeding him. One thing to help out a, a young quarterback is uh, get a good running game going. Then he can do some play action and open things up uh, downfield. And the one thing that Meadowbrook's been showing a little bit is the little uh, Tim Tebow RPO jump pass on a quick slant that they've run a few times. I know they've run it to Blankenship, and I think they've run it a couple times to Norman. It's been pretty successful. Another outside run here. Bob finds a spot, gets the first down inside the to about the 40-yard line, so that should be a 16-yard pickup. Again, that's a good outside run. That lineman blocking downfield, continue with their blocks. Uh, so that's a good job. Also a good job by Bop continuing to stretch it uh, horizontally instead of vertically, so to speak, and he was able to outrun a defender who almost got him a couple yards behind the line. So Meadowbrook and shotgun split backs here. Huey hands it off to Bop again. And Bop finds a hole. And he's going to have a very close to another first down. He's, I guess he's going to be about two yards short. So that's going to be another gain of eight. So five, five plays for Meadowbrook. Gained 32 yards and five carries for 32 yards for Sam Bop. So it's been pretty easy going. Uh, it's been Sam Bop, Sam Sam Bop right, Sam Bop left, Sam Bop up the middle, and let's try a little Sam Bop up the middle again for first down. Again, second and short, that's all you need right there. Three, four yards, and just keep chucking it down the field. So it's going to be another Meadowbrook first down on a gain of three. So good job uh, there. That's the uh, third first down of the game. Now again, Meadowbrook again did a good job going it from 30 to 30. Now they're inside the 30. Now it's about finishing the drive as we might have an offsides call. No, nope, there's not going to be a call. Outside linebackers changing positions. And here's Bop up the middle again. Finds a hole. He's got a first down. He's going to be brought down out of that about the 19-yard line. So just inside the 19. So it's going to be another Colts first down. Bop did a good job right there. Just... Staying up the middle, not trying to get fancy, just uh, getting up and get one he can get. And it's another gain of 10. So seven carries, 45 yards, four. And here's a keeper on the read option, not working out as well as Huey stopped for a loss of six. He had a receiver open out there, number 21, Mason Blankenship, but just couldn't get out of his hands quick enough to get it to him. And shockingly, you thought that play would work because obviously – Bop's touching the ball seven straight plays, so you got to be sitting on him. But uh, good job by the Ceramics defense uh, reading the play and uh, realizing Huey uh, still had it in his pocket. I'm going to a little bit of a spread formation here, not two backs in the backfield, but only one. This might be a screen here on the bottom side. That's going to be a draw with Huey. And he's getting those six yards back and then a couple more as he's down inside the 17. So that's going to be a gain of eight for the Colts. Casey Clinton, he did a great job pulling there and kicking his guy out, and uh, he was able to fall right off his butt. And we have a 76 on there. We're not 100% sure as far as who that is. We think it might be Ethan Hattie, so we, uh, we'll try to find out later who it is. Here's a screen to Nick Norman. He's going to be... Just a little short of the first down. So first pass attempt for the Colts. It's going to be a gain of seven. 
Again, good for a young quarterback. Get, catch the ball, get out of his hands as quick as he can. Don't let him sit in the pocket. Think about it too much and get some yards downfield. So fourth and a – we're going to say fourth and a short two long ones, what we're going to go with. And here's the hand off the bop, and he's met in the backfield. Big play, I believe that was 28. Brady Cottrell, junior linebacker for Crooksville, blew up through the play, and unfortunately for the Colts, a good drive goes bad as they can't convert the fourth down, and it's going to be ceramics football at the – 12-yard line. Yeah, that's a good stop by uh, Crooksville there. Like you said, number 28 was able to stop it. Um, Crooksville had a lot of people in the box right there. I think they knew what was going on. We knew what was going on, and they just got to the ball. And while we have some time, we'll thank our sponsors for tonight. Uh, our uh, Fab Five, as we'll call them. It seems like they're here. they we can rely on them every year. Uh, Graham Excavating. Main Screen Printing, West Falls Services, g and Roofing, and Teal Dove Consulting. So we appreciate the, the sponsorship they provide for us. So we can provide this live stream for you. And if you're not listening to us here in the Meadowbrook game, the KGP Network's over the place, and we're covering Buckeye Trail as well as a little end-around sweep to 25. Christian Browning going to lose a – well, I might get back to the line of scrimmage, it looks like. Number 51, Talon Cannon did a good job from his defensive line position to sprint down the line and uh, not quit on the play and uh, make the tackle right there at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Meadowbrook just did a good job not giving him a place to run up the field. Kept forcing him out wide and a no gain on the first play. So Colts definitely looking to uh, kind of get the bad taste out of their mouth, so to speak, after uh, last week's tough loss at Cambridge. And uh, I'm sure this week was a very uh, tough practice for them, and they want to be prepared for the ceramics here. A little inside handoff quickly. Dumped is Daniel Chapman. So he maybe gets a yard. Chucky Dyer had, did a great job uh, getting through the line and be able to hit him in the backfield. And it looks like he got stopped at the line. So two plays, zero yards. So the Colts, uh, Colts run defense, defense up front, stepping up here to early going. It'll be interesting to see here if uh, – Crooks wants to throw it a little bit, or if they're just happy with running the ball deep in their own zone. Now a shotgun looks quick, fire into the flats, opens number 15. Blaze Hunter with the reception. He's tackled well short of the first down. Yeah, Nick Norman right there had a good secure tackle and not able to let him pick up that first down. So that was a gain of six on the play. So it's going to be fourth down here for the ceramic. So a thing the Meadowbrook faithful like their defense, forcing a three and out on the first defensive possession of the game. Should put Meadowbrook in good field position here. It's a good high punt there. It's fair caught at their own 48. Punt was by Brady Cottrell. Fair caught by number five, Evan, Evan. Evan Dyer, yeah. Great fair catch. And uh, right there near mid midfield. So let's do the math here. That was, a, I believe, from the 12, the 12 to the 48. We're talking a 40-yard punt for that young man. So a nice, uh, nice punt by Cottrell on the Crooksville end. Yeah, still puts Meadowbrook in good field position. And they had a good drive last time. And see if they can repeat, repeat that uh, by getting the ends in this time. So again, Meadowbrook with the trips right. When you see that, the automatic first thing you want to think is uh, maybe a screen. But it's going to be a handoff to Bop, and he's going to fall forward for two. Yeah, the, the Meadowbrook does have the numbers out here. They have three receivers to two uh, defenders. So, like you said, it might be a quick screen, a pick, quick pass out here. So we're going to give Bop a gain of three on that one. And here's the little bubble screen there. It's, it's thrown just a little bit out of the reach of Landon Kuhn there. Yeah, number six, uh, Cottrell for Crooksville. Knew that was coming just as we did, and uh, he did a good job fighting through that block to make it hard on the receiver. So we're still having look like looks like some scoreboard issues as we're – there it's fixed. It's second and seven now. We had second – well, it should be third and seven. There it is, but uh, they had it at second and 58 there for a second, so – Looks at the screen, not there, good covered. Now Huey's trying to take off. 
breaks one tackle, stays alive, falls down, gets hit hard at the 45. So that should be a gain of three or four for Huey. He has a good hard tackle by number 13 from Crooksville, uh, Seth Darlimple. So a big fourth down decision here for the Colts as it looks like well, Norman is in the shotgun formation here. They tried this a little bit against Cambridge as he's going to take it on a QB sweep on the Wildcat, so to speak. And he's going to pick up the first down and get pushed forward to about the 37. So a good eight-yard tough run by Nick Norman there. You know, he first got initially contacted by the defender. He thought it was a short of the first down, um, but he was able to keep the legs driving and uh, pick up that first down. Yeah, it didn't look very good uh, early, but uh, he was able to pick up the first down as he's going to be back in that same formation again. This time he's going to keep it on a draw up the middle. He's got some room inside the 30 to the 29 almost. So another good run there from Nick Norman. Number one there for Meadowbrook, Braylon Lauer did a great job blocking downfield to help him uh, pick up those eight yards. So another, he had another eight yard run for the sophomore. Now Huey's going to be taking the snaps again. Pistol formation. Bop's going to now motion him to the left of him. And there's the handoff to Bop. And he's got the first down. Breaks a tackle. Falls down inside the 25 to about the 24. Yeah. So another Meadowbrook first down. Bob did a good job there again. Hit by right there on that first uh, down marker. And it kept on driving his feet. And they were able to pick it up. And he's got 52 yards rushing on 10 carries here in the first quarter as we're 324 to go in the opening quarter. Here's the hand off the ball. Breaks one. Guy keeps a hold of it. Ooh, and he got bent backwards hard there on that gain of one. Looks like he's all right. That's scary. Yeah, he made me hurt on that tackle. So a gain of one for Bob on the play. Yeah, Christian Browning there for uh, Crooks who had a, a nice tackle. Then he had help from the teammates and bent ball backwards. Uh, glad he was able to get up. Yeah, the great thing about being young, you can survive those hard tackles. <laughs> so Blankenship in motion. Comes in as an extra, kind of moves into as an extra blocker as here's the handoff to Bob. And wow. Ends up making the tackle. Crooksville player loses his helmet on the play. That's 28, Brady Cottrell, and he stops stops a bop right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, if you notice there, the receiver came from ever came to the other side of the line and had a uh, had him outnumbered to the right, and that's what he was trying to do. Just uh, I think of the old days, student body right and student body left. It looks like a little bit here. And unfortunately, the play is going to be nullified I believe because there's a false start on Meadowbrook or an illegal procedure like you said there's small little penalties they might not see much but uh, they can definitely kill your drive so with that little uh, student body right as you said uh, coach Norman must be thinking back in his playing days when he uh, played under the legendary late coach Joe Casper and uh, where the Colts ran the old student body left student body right there's a pump fake by Huey, fires, and smart decision there as he kind of threw it away as uh, Crooksville defender Trenton Cottrell was uh, getting ready to jump that little curl route. Yeah, it looked like number 50 also, uh, Jake Thompson uh, for Crooksville. It jumped up, and was, I'm glad Huey brought it back down because he's right in the, the line of fire right there. It could have intercepted it. So 2.02 to go, and again, third and 14 here for the Colts. A Again, moved it good from the 30 to 30, got inside the 30, had a, a penalty that kind of knocked them back here. Now they're at the 29, need a, need a big play here. Don't need it all, just pick up some yards here. And here's the hand off the bop. And he's going to pick up a lot of it as he's going to get down to about the 19. So it should be a gain of 10 on the play. Which that makes it manageable now for the mm -hmm. offense to do any play they really want here. Now from here, it would be a 36 yard field goal. I wouldn't mind seeing uh, Garrett Milam try, try it out and try this because I think he has the leg for it. 
but the Colts are going to go for it fourth and four. I believe one for two on fourth downs in the opening drive. Bop comes to the side of Huey. Meadowbrook still running that clock down. One second on the play clock. Get rid of it. Fires it. Incomplete. Uh, I think the old should have thought he was going to zig and he zagged there as Huey uh, mistaken the Crooksville defender for his receiver. But luckily the ball falls down incomplete. And it's going to be Crooksville possession here. Yeah, I thought they was trying to draw him off sides. He was going to call a timeout and get a play. Uh, but they decided to, to go with it. And so again, Meadowbrook moves down the field, but uh, can't quite finish out the drive. But again, the Meadowbrook defense is going to force Crooksville to go a long way. So they're going to start it, th throws it into the turf, incomplete. Looks like he was trying to throw an out route to Mason Blankenship from Meadowbrook right there. I thought he had the beat on him. I had a chance, but a little too far for him. Meadowbrook defense doing a good job as that's four plays for the Crooksville offense and only six yards. They have two runs, zero yards, and uh, Cottrell's one and two passing for six yards. Cottrell's looking, rolling out. Here comes Farley's going to hit him and knock him down. It's going to be a gain of two by Cottrell, but good draw by uh, Farley there. Yeah, the whole Colts secondary did a great job. I didn't see an open receiver running free. They did a good job, covered up. Cottrell was tucking and ran, and uh, like you said, a nice open field tackle by Farley. Cottrell gains two on the play, so it's still going to be a third long, third and eight. Could possibly be the last play of the first quarter here. Both teams doing a good job of uh, taking their time, getting the plays in, working the clock. Definitely not what you've been used to in the past with the Colts teams as a uh, They've been all gas, no breaks, but uh, with a young team, Coach Norman's being a lot more patient with the uh, play clock and everything. It's, that one's fired just down the diving reach of Corbin Browning, incomplete. Number 17 from Everbrook there, Jacob Bur Burris did a great job. Again, uh, caught the scramble drill once the quarterback gets outside the pocket. Burris was able to stay on the receiver and uh, had to basically throw it away right there. And tough play, too, by Cultural. He was rolling out to his left, had to throw it kind of across his body, didn't get himself set and to fire it in there. Again, should be good field position for Meadowbrook here. So last time he punted 40 yards. He's punting from the 21 this time. And that's a low liner. Dyer's going to let it roll. It's going to roll to the 41, make it the 40. So what didn't look like a good punt ended up going 41 yards. So I guess that's the benefit of having a turf field, right? Mm -hmm. Getting the uh, lucky, lucky bounces they call or they, sometimes I like them when I'm short, when I'm putting it on, hitting it onto the green and I get a nice roll like that. That's right. Got the home field bounce. Mm -hmm. Even though the visitors. But. So Meadowbrook's going to start at their own 40 yard line. Seven and a half seconds left, opening quarter. Shotgun, bop to the side. Here's the handoff to Bob. And he's gonna gain a couple, but quickly met. Again, 75, Casey Clinton, he did a good job uh, pulling and kicking out the defensive end right there. There's a little, little alley out to the, a little wider, but uh, Bob tried to get some up the middle. So that's going to do it for the first quarter here at Eugene Keepers Field, and we have no score. We'll be back with second quarter action here on the KGP Network.
Welcome back. Second quarter here at Meadowbrook High School. Score update. Uh, our friendly rivals to the right. Cambridge is trailing 7-0 to zero to Indian Valley. Going to be a tough game. It's the middle screen there. I believe it was given to Nick Norman. And he fights for three yards on the play. Was hit at the line, but spins around and picks up three. Yeah, Meadowbrook must have had that play from the sideline. They ran out. Kind of tried to hit uh, Norman right there by the line, the lineman. And a little screen there for five yards. So it's going to be third and five. Meadowbrook taking their time. Huey in the pistol behind him, Bop. Meadowbrook three receivers up to the top, top of your screen. Now Bop comes in beside. He's looking, a little stop route through the hands of Blankenship incomplete. So now Meadowbrook, another tough decision here. They've been able to move the ball and get to get some uh, good yardage and haven't been able to finish the drive. This is going to be their first. It looks like three and out as I believe they're going to, uh, yeah, they're sending in the putt team as Clint Denning is going to uh, come in and punt. Is he the, he's the new punter now for the Colts. As unfortunately, uh, Cam Morrison got hurt earlier in the year against Barnesville. That was a good ball by Huey right there. This went through the receiver's hands. A nice punt by Clinton as it's fielded at the 25 by 25. He's still moving. He's in Meadowbrook territory. Ooh. He's going to, and that's going to be a flag for a hit out of bounds. He's out at the 44, they're going to say. And you're probably going to tack on 15 more yards on the play. So it looks like it's going to be. Should be Crooksville ball at the 29 yard line. Really, a, 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 that's just a tough play for young kids. You, you want to make the play, and you're so focused on making the play and just getting out of bounds just that split second earlier kind of hurts. Yeah, you know, I think this official is pointing towards Crooksville. Wow. I might get a block in the back or something here. Wow, so that's even better news for uh, Meadowbrook. Yeah, I don't know if he pushed, maybe pushed him in the back over there, and that's why he took him out. Well, I, lo I looked over and saw a, somebody standing on Crooksville section was clapping, so I thought the flag was on Meadowbrook, and it was close on that sideline, but it is going to be on the ceramics, and now they're going to get moved back to their own 47. But still, best field position they've had on the night is the other two possessions have been at the 12 and 19-yard line. So the ceramics get to pick up a first down, and here's a handoff, outside run, nowhere to go. Blankenship, that ball's popped out. And Meadowbrook's going to, it's still loose, and now Blankenship's going to fall on it around the 24. It looked like wow. number six from Meadowbrook. Braden uh, Black just tried to pick it up and run. Couldn't pick it up, and uh, his, the Colts were able to pounce on it. So wow, what looked like a good life for Crooksville turns into a big time miscue and the Colts are back in business as they're gonna take over at the Crooksville 24. And again, talking about two young teams, Crooksville thought they had 15 plus yards going the other way for hit out of bounds, you know, get 15 yard back and uh, just can, seems to uh, start compiling. And that's what unfortunately happens with young and inexperienced teams as Bop is gonna get it full speed ahead for about a four or five yard gain. He might end with 50 plus touches tonight, it seems like. Normally that's an exaggeration, but uh, I don't know about tonight. Well, he, that was rush number 14 on the night for him. Huey looking over, getting the signal for the play. Ooh, and probably should have been a little call as a false starter, illegal motion on Colts instead. It's going to be a little dump off to Kuhn. Huey did a good job there, playing through it and uh, getting rid of it again, getting a couple yards. And it looks like it's going to be a gain of two on that pass. I think everybody in the stands thought it was a false start, but the referees did not blow the whistle, so he kept playing through it. Uh, definitely the uh, Crooksville coaching staff in the uh, room to the right of us uh, thought it was for sure. 
Actually, it's going to be a gain of four. It looks like they moved it a little bit more. And there's a hand off the bop, and he's going to have the first down. Number 24, Crooksville, was in the backfield there. Bob did a little jump cut to the right, and I uh, was able to pick up the first down. So another four-yard gain for Sam Bob. 15 carries, 72 yards for him so far tonight. As we got just over nine and a half to go in the first half. Meadowbrook in the red zone. Key here to, to put the ball in the end zone. They've had great position the past couple times. they got to put it in here. And Bop on the carry again. We're going to have a sideline warning on the Colts. Number 13 for Crooksville right there. Seth Darlimple did a good job of turning that play back inside uh, for the linebackers and the rest of the line to, uh, to clean Bop up. So no gain on the play from Bop. As Meadowbrook again taking their time. It's just so crucial down here. So pistol formation is going to get uh, Bop lined up to the left of him. Here's the hand off the Bop looking up the middle. Got a couple but quickly swarmed. Maybe only a gain of one on the play as Crooksville's right on it. Yeah, Crooksville done, has done a nice job up the front. Seems like Bob gets some yards once he gets going outside, but up the front, uh, Crooksville's pretty stout up there. So only a gain of one for Meadowbrook. Third and nine. 7.53 and counting. Again, the pistol. Cooper from McMahon away in motion. Rolling out to Huey's looking, throw it to back to an open Cooper McManway, who's brought down immediately at the 15 yard line. So, read very well by Brady Cottrell of Crooksville. It's going to be a loss of four on the play. And it's going to be fourth down Colts. And Garrett Milam is trotting onto the field to attempt the field goal. That's why they pay you the big bucks, right? Mm -hmm. You caught it for last time? Yeah. Hey. Our, our headsets are a little two-way. We can uh, interfere with the uh, Meadowbrook faithful. I said, Coach Norman, let's try a field goal here. Like I said in our pregame show, the pass, I was like, a high school field goal is one of the most, unfortunately, it's going to be a bad snap here, and Huey's going to get tackled behind the line. So it's going to be a loss of six, I think, on the play. So unfortunately, a little muff snap, bad snap, and the, uh, Milam didn't get the opportunity to, to try it there. Well, like I, that's going to be a loss of three, it looks like. But I said on our pregame show how we, uh, I think uh, the field goal in high school is probably one of the most exciting plays in high school football just because you don't see these guys that can make the 57-yard field goals like, uh, like Matt Day did right before the half last night for the Rams. Uh, it's pretty cool to see some of these kids make a 35-yard field goal. That That's, in my point of view, my opinion's like a hitting a 60 yarder in an NFL game. Well, most of those kids are playing soccer right now in a lot of the other schools. So <laughs> and some of those guys are soccer players that are playing football on Friday nights too. Right. So a one yard gain there for Crooksville. Hopefully Maverick's defense again uh, has been doing a good job stopping them. Stop them right here again. Get good field position. And again, you keep knocking on the door of the end zone. One time, you got to get in. There's going to be an inside handoff. He's brought down immediately behind the backfield. 51 Talon Cannon. We said his name a couple times tonight. He's uh, exploded through and made some plays. Yeah, he did a great job right there finding the hole and uh, give him a five yard loss. I didn't get who carried that ball for Crooksville. So it's going to be third and long for the ceramics at their own 15, or own 20, excuse me. Third and 14. Yep, no mental mistakes here. Let them get fourth down and have the defense get off the field. 
How about this Meadowbrook defense has held Crooksville to negative one yards rushing on the day. And we're gonna have another flag here. And it looks like it's gonna be delay of game on the ceramics, so knock them back five more. Looks like Cottrell is looking down here for number five, uh, Chevalier uh, receiver down here. That is his uh, number one receiving option. He's yet to catch a pass as he's only completed that one to Hunter for six yards. So they're going to need a good play here as it's now third and 19. Man in motion. Cottrell dropping back. Dumps it open to a man. And he's going to get tackled immediately at about the 23, it looks like. Hammer with the reception. Jacob Hammer on the reception. Great job again by the Colts defense. Yeah. Uh, don't let anybody behind you, which they did. They throw it short, come up and make the tackle. Now Crooksville has to punt. So a gain of nine, which is the longest play from scrimmage for Crooksville tonight. But they once again are going to have to punt third time their punter is a punted it for 40 and 41 and he gets another solid punt off here as Dyer retrieves it at about the 39 falls back all the way to the 35 and we're gonna have a block in the back on the Colts here as he's gonna get tackled at around the 41 so the ball's probably gonna get after the penalty move back to about the 25 for the Colts Again, just one of those small mistake plays that, uh, you know, had a decent field position around the 40-yard line. Oh, no, I'm going to back him up even more. So, going to be a block in the back on the Colts, it looks like. So they're going to mark it, it looks like, from the 36. If they mark it with a 10-yard penalty, it's going to be at the 26. So Meadowbrook's going to have a little work to do on their fourth drive of the night. We'll thank our sponsors, Graham Excavating, Main Screen Printing, West Fall Services, GB Roofing, and Teal Dove Consulting. If you'd like to sponsor one of our live streams, uh, reach out to Caleb on KGP Sports on Facebook, and we'll get you on the next live stream. Yeah, if you look right here and see that there's three member receivers, I got two Crooksville defenders. Here, the safety's kind of coming over top, but still, you got one man to beat on that screen. They've had that opportunity most of the game as the inside hand. Ooh, that's a, there's your late hit, yep. <laughs> so Bob gains four on the play, and you're going to tack on another 15 for the Colts on the little late hit. Yeah, Bob was clearly down, clearly down and uh, Crooksville came in with their head straight and hit Bob right on the head, and that's definitely going to get a flag every time. That's a criminal offense in the NFL if you do it to some quarterbacks too. So Meadowbrook's going to have first and 10 at their own 45 now. 426 left in the second quarter here. Plenty of time to put together a drive and, again, go down and put one in. And Crooksville wants to call a timeout here. Uh, and I think this is a timeout where he's just trying to tell his guys, hey, let's calm down. It's almost the end of the half. We've got to stop them this drive, and maybe we can put, a, put some points on the board here to uh, end the first half. We get the ball to start the second half. But... We don't want to give up anything here, but Meadowbrook, on the other hand, Coach Norman's got to be talking about finishing, finishing, finishing. Yeah, just like Crooksville right there. You don't want to, you don't want to make your own mistake. You know, the reason why Meadowbrook is going to score should be because of them doing it. You shouldn't do it like right there, that late hit. That's your own mistake. Right? That's you should not give them yards. You should play just fundamental football and let them score instead of you helping them out. And unfortunately, that comes with uh, young and inexperienced teams that aren't used to being a. Uh, playing on the bright lights of Friday night, just making these uh, mistakes that kind of really just seem like they compound things. So Meadowbrook's going to have possession. Pistol formation, bop in the backfield behind him. And it's a fake, and there's the little RPO. Hits Norman, breaks one tackle, scampering down to about the 25. So we're going to have a 30-yard gain for Nick Norman on the play. He has a great play by Huey there to be able to fake it, find Norman, 
right in the middle, wide open, and uh, deliver the ball to him. And Norman has started to uh, turn into that uh, number one receiving option for the Colts as Bob's going to be met in the backfield on this one for a loss of one. And it seems like I've noticed this uh, for the Colts. It seems like after they hit a big play, they like running fast on the very next play. But, yeah, uh, try to go get that momentum going. Mm -hmm. Like you said before, there's all gas. Oh, now they slowed down a little bit, but yeah, just keep compounding, keep going. Here Huey's looking, fires. Woo. Good job by the Crooksville defender. Jumped that little slant uh, blankenship, but Huey wisely throws it into the turf in front of him for an incomplete pass. Yeah, it looked like a little miscommunication right there, and uh, Huey again just hopefully threw it away, because if not, uh, Crooksville would have picked it off. Now I, I hate to keep repeating myself, but again, Matterbrook, great from 30 to 30, but now they're inside to 30, and here it is, third and 12 from 27. And fakes the handoff. Fires incomplete as Kuhn can't come down with it. Yeah, that was a great play there. Uh, it'd be nice for Huey just to give another about a second for let the Kuhn to get out there and uh, be able to catch that ball. Because that was just a little tight um, for my liking. And now, unfortunately, they don't complete that pass. That's going to kind of cut the yardage in half. And this is pretty much an automatic fourth down. You're going for it here from uh, about the 27-yard line as that's fourth and 12. So. They could have at least cut it. It kind of gives you more plays and more options you can get to. That's right. On that play, you don't need all the yards, just some of them to help you out. Play clock winding down the five. Snap. Huey's looking to his right. Throws it over to the flat. It bounces incomplete just short of Norman. And it's going to be Crooksville football at their own 27 with 334 to go. And that's just a long throw, especially for a young quarterback. So that's a long throw from the side, uh, from the hash all the way to the sideline. And once he gets older, I mean, that's going to be an easy throw for him. We've just got to mature a little bit. Just got to get in the weight room. So Crooksville may have thought they made a bad timeout when uh, Norman caught the 30-yard pass to get the Colts inside the 30. But the Crooksville defense holds strong, gets a turnover on downs, and they're taking over at their own 27 with 3.34 to go in the first half. Cottrell and the shotgun. They got, and that's going to be, a, yeah. I will say, I don't think you can get your lineman set and then have him go in motion to the oh. other side. All right, it's going to be off sides on the Colts. I guess he wasn't set, so. That was a nice, tricky little play there. Pick up five easy yards. So first and five now for the ceramics. Looks like, yeah, looks like that top guy was not set that time either. So what made in motion? He gets set. Second guy in motion. Cottrell's going to keep it on a QB sweep. Breaks a few tackles. Fall forward. He's going to be close to a first down. They're going to say it is a first down. Yeah, Crooksville just brought an unbalanced line. They brought the tackle over from the top side uh, down here and uh, ran Cottrell to the right. That's going to be a gain of six, it looks like. That's the first first down in a while. I'm for Maybe their first first down, actually. I don't have any mark, but I may have missed one. Mm-hmm. And yeah, normally it's been three and out. So they're in 38, Crooksville ball, three minutes and counting. Cottrell's going to keep it again. He's going to get hit at about the 40, but fall forward to the 42. So a gain of four on the play. I don't know if Cottrell has to come out. That's their starting quarterback, and now they're looking around like, what do we do, coach? What do we do? Still two <laughs> minutes and 29, 28 seconds here in the second quarter. It was nice, uh, Caleb, I hear on his phone, he uh, put the Buckeye Trail game up. He's standing here to the left of me, and you can hear the luxurious voice of... Uh, the one and only Tommy Strasser announcing that game as the Warriors are on top seven to nothing. 
over Shenandoah as the snap a little high, retrieved. I believe that's 25, Christian Browning. He's going to pick up a couple yards on the play as Cottrell's going to trot back in. And there's a bunch of Colts there, but uh, Talon Cannon, I think, met him uh, in the hole there and uh, the rest of the, the Colts defenders and was able to drive him to the ground. So third and four. 140 and counting. So Crooksville, even though the clock's moving, being very patient here. There's a handoff on the sweep. 15, mm. and he's met. 52. Zayden Yeagle plants him into the ground. For no gain. It was Blaze Hunter on the carry. Yep, still a minute left. Rolling clock. Uh, Meadowbrook not going to use a timeout. Right, that's They're what I was thinking. I mean, you, you got the three timeouts, but uh, Coach Norman playing it really conservative and knows that, like, got a young team. You never know what can happen. We might make a mistake. It doesn't want to risk uh, risk anything happening. As another booming punt. Dyer's going to let that one roll, and how about this roll? Nobody. The Crooksville players just let it roll into the end zone, and again, that's another one of those situations where you talk about inexperienced kids not knowing the situations, but hey, give their punter credit. That's going to be a 56-yard punt after the roll. And Meadowbrook's going to take over at their own 20 with 40.3 seconds left. <laughs> Crooksville could have done that on the inch line. And uh, it would have been uh, real scary for the Colts to get out of their own end zone there. Mm -hmm. So definitely uh, – so the Crooksville coaching staff will be having a nice special teams drill uh, tomorrow morning or Monday morning at their next official practice. Usually those Saturday mornings are kind of do an injury checkup and maybe do a little bit of lifting, but that's definitely going to be a topic of conversation the next time they meet. As Huey's going to fire sideline open, Lowry catches, or no, excuse me, that's Dyer who catches it. Going to be a gain of 11 and a Meadowbrook first down. That's a good ball by Huey. You catch it, throw it, and get rid of it. You know, that's how you design it. Yeah, the ceramics playing a little soft defense there, and uh, he easily finds Dyer, an easy 11-yard 11, 11 pickup, get out of bounds, save the clock, and he's going to fire it almost the same play. And unfortunately, we have a flag, which means probably going to be holding on the Colts. Like you said, it looks like Crooksville is playing a prevent defense here. A really kind of a smart idea. Neither teams have really shown the tendency to throw the ball down the field and make big plays. Uh, let them throw it out in front of you and tackle them. Keep them to that five, six, eight-yard gain every time. Because it looks like on that play right there, Crooksville rushed one guy, it seemed like. And that one guy was able to draw a holding. So, so a 10-yard penalty there on the Colts. Going to turn what could be a second short to a first and 20. Meadowbrook might be content to just run the clock out. They're going to line up as they're going to run a play. Well, actually, they have to run a play because it's a 25-second play clock after the penalty. So Huey rolls out, looking, gets himself square, doesn't see anything, tries going back to the middle field, and he's taken down for a loss of one. And Brady Cottrell, not only is he a good punter, but he's in there on defense making plays. And we are going to go to the half here at Meadowbrook High School where we have a 0-0 score. We'll be back after you see the bands perform and we'll be back with some halftime statistics and some scoring updates from around the area here on the KGP Network. Moon Dance by 
Ann Morrison. Sit back and relax as senior Hannah Thacker gets us started with a flugelhorn solo. Lights by Ella Golding is a pop number that features two soloists, senior Andrew Rollins on alto sax and sophomore Noah Peck on flute. In the darkest part of the night, we can see the brightest stars. Join the marching ceramics in Counting Stars by One Republic. The band closes with a fallout boy favorite. Our songs know what you did in the dark, inviting you to join us in lighting up the night. Catch the marching ceramics at their first competition tomorrow, Saturday, September the 10th at Philo.
50-50 ticket one more time. 240197. 50-50 ticket. 240197. Get your money at the press box. at Eugene Capers Field, where we have a scoreless tie. We may have a minute left on the clock, but I'm sure they're gonna throw three more minutes on it here. So we'll look at halftime statistics. For the visiting Crooksville Ceramics, it's been a bit of a struggle on the ground as they only have, probably should have tallied these numbers at halftime, but we were too busy talking. Eight yards on 10 carries while well, Cottrell has two completions out of four attempts for 15 yards he has a nine yard completion to Hammer and a six yard completion to Hunter Colts on the other hand have been able to move the ball at times been able to go from 30 to 30 well but once they get inside that 30 he's been struggling to, to finish off drives they've been led by Sam Bob who has 19 carries 76 yards Nick Norman has two carries, 16 yards, and Justice Huey, five carries for three. Huey leading the passing attack for the Colts as he's completed. Six out of 13 for 52 yards. Nick Norman leading the way with three catches for 41 yards. Landon Kuhn, one for four. Evan Dyer, one for 11, and Cooper Manaway had a catch for a loss of four. So Kyle looking at the uh, first half here as Crooksville is going to get it once we come back to second half action. Uh, what's some things that kind of stood out for you? Uh, definitely Meadowbrook handing Bob the ball. Uh, it'd be nice to get uh, Nick Norman. He had a couple plays there. He got uh, like 10, 12 yards. Uh, maybe mix it up with him uh, instead of just relying on Bob up the middle. It seems like uh, Crooksville maybe zeroed in on, on that. Uh, so again, maybe uh, throw him a little, a little wrinkle, something new towards him uh, for Meadowbrook. As for Crooksville, um, their starting quarterback, uh, Cottrell, he went out the last uh, series there, didn't come back the last two plays. Uh, looks like he's over there warming up right now. And uh, again, I think that they did the best when he just had the ball, uh, direct snap, and went to the right, went to the left, and uh, picked up yards. So yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Again, more of the same in the second half. And again, we kind of been saying this repeatedly over the game. Metabook has done a good job of moving the football 
but being able to finish those drives is so crucial and especially when you got this young of a team sometimes just that finishing the drives and putting the consistency together it's kind of just been their downfall here uh, in the first 24 minutes of the game you know like you said just don't hurt yourself and uh they're just drive killers you know it should be third and short third and five well now there's a holding now you got to back up uh it just kills your drives so we have a zero zero tie with about a minute till we we'll kick off the second half and Colts are coming to the sideline here so they're definitely uh fired up they played prop definitely played their best game defensively of the year as a uh, holding the uh, ceramic scoreless looking at the first half like you said uh, they got to find ways to get Bob get him some open lanes I feel like he he's just one good block away from breaking breaking a big play or, or somebody making a big play you, you just feel like that eventually they're gonna pop one here in the second half right and there's some there's some older kids there's some seniors like Bob for example you know I'm sure he's up there at halftime um, you know, this is our game, and that should be the message that the, uh, the coaches are telling the kids, either both sides, for that sake. Um, this is our game, and, you know, come out here. It's a new game, 0-0. Zero to zero. Um, Come out here and get after it. So we are, should be five seconds away from kickoff. Meadowbrook cuddling up. Crooksville huddling up on their side. It looks like the... Uh, The uh, Ceramics will get the ball to start the second half here, or should at least. As we got some Queen Will You Rock You coming through the PA system here. What a great night for football, though. Mm -hmm. Nice cool weather. It was definitely hot earlier, uh, so I think we might have some uh, cramping issues, but uh, feeling right now we got a nice little cool breeze coming in here towards us. As I think there before the game we might have sweated off about 10 or 15 pounds, but I think we put on 20 with the amount of wings we put down before. I'm definitely a sucker for some wings. So here's Milam kicking off the left footer. Touched at the 23. That's Cottrell, and he's going to pick up 19 yards on the return, so Crookso is going to have their second best field position tonight as they're going to take over at their own 42-yard line. Remember the last time they had great field position, uh, they tried a little sweep to the outside and fumbled it, and Medbrook recovered uh, and at the, I believe it was the Crooksville 24, but they couldn't finish off that drive. Definitely Medbrook's had the chances, that is for sure. <laughs> We have the, uh, thanks to our own producer, Caleb Graham, he uh, tells them over there it is the third quarter, not the fifth quarter here at Eugene Capers Field, so we got that fixed. Not only does he produce a great game, he can do it all. As Cottrell's going to scramble and pick up maybe a yard as the Colts run him out of bounds. Looks like Braden Black was able to chase him out of bounds. So all that running for Cultural is going to be just for a gain of a yard. Good job again by the Colts defense. Seems like they've been able to control the line of scrimmage on the defensive end and really, really force Crooksville into doing some things they don't want to do. There's a handoff up the middle. He's met immediately. And he's going to... He's going to lose a yard on that, and I couldn't tell who. I think it was uh, Cottrell that carried it there. And he lost a yard on the play. Yeah, that whole defensive interior for the Colts was able to, to push their man back in the backfield. And right here, just another great job by the Colts defense. How many times has Crooksville been a third and long situation? It's been third and seven, third and eight, third and nine, here third and ten. I mean, good job by this Meadowbrook defense. Winning first down, winning second down, and really... Limited them in that playbook for their opponent. Snap, Cottrell looking. Here comes Blitz from the outside. Breaks one tackle, looks up the middle. Breaks another tackle. He's going to have a first down as he's drugged down at the 46, 47-yard line. It's going to be a Crooksville first down. Yeah, I thought when 
Cottrell uh, went and dropped back the pass. I thought blitzing on the outside corner, like you said. Um, he is able to scamper up the middle for a first down. So big time first down run there to set up to get the first down for Crooksville. And that, I believe, was their longest play from scrimmage at 11-yard run by Cottrell. They haven't been on the other side of the 50 very often, if at all tonight. I don't think they, I don't think they have been at all, actually. Oh. And he, here's that e exotic shift here as a one lineman not really sure where he needs to go. And we're going to have a flag. It's yeah, not good when they both, uh, both sides of the line start to shift and they're looking at each other. So now just, again, like the inexperienced team, they have a good play, and then now a five-yard penalty puts them back from a first and 10 to a first and 15. So just those are just the frustrating plays as a, for a coaching staff. When you have a team, you're, you're making some positive strides, and then you have this little mistake that kind of puts you behind the eight ball a little bit. So there's shotgun spread formation, two receivers each side. Here's a snap, Cottrell fires it in the flats, completed to number five, Gunner Chevalier, their number one target, his first catch of the night. Hey, I saw Meverick was just playing a little off coverage, just again pitch and catch, and pick up five yards. It's going to be a gain of seven officially, seven it looks officially. like. My math a little off there. So Chevalier with his first catch. Another shotgun, dropping back, gets the pressure. He's going to roll out to his left. He's looking down the field, doesn't have anybody. He's going to get hit at the line of scrimmage as he's going to fall down for no gain. I believe that's Noah Farley on the tackle for the Colts. Yeah, Mason Blankenship there, 21 for the Colts. Did a great job for one of his receiver down the field and uh, giving Cottrell no room to go. Had to just tuck in and get what he could get. Taking their time in the huddle here. Yeah, they've been close to another delay of game. They've been running that play clock down real, mm -hmm. real close. Here's a snap, hands it off. It's gonna be a pass here. Maybe it's 25 looking. He doesn't have anybody through to. He's gonna bounce off a few tacklers. I believe that was Christian Browning. He's gonna fall forward and gain about We're going to say four yards on that one. Yeah, Braden Black did a good job there. Again, chasing him down and uh, going after the ball carrier. And uh, again, not know if he's going to pass or not, but he still went towards the ball carrier and was able to bring him down. And again, a fourth and five. They're going to bring out the punting team, and I'm sure this is something they talked about at yeah. halftime. This guy boomed one, got a roll 56 yards. It rolled into the back of the end zone. I'm sure uh, Crooksville coaching staff talking to their players. Let's down it before it gets in the end zone. It's a bad snap, but he gets the punt off, and it's again going to take a Crooksville roll inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line. You know, Evan Dyer did a good job right there. He acted like he was going to pick it up, and once he did that, the Crooksville players, they uh, actually stopped the ball from rolling. I still think he had another yard or two to roll. So that one was We'll say only a 34-yard punt, but he's a punted 40, 41, and 54 tonight. A uh, punter for Crooksville, uh, Brady Cottrell. So that one, but obviously he didn't want to get a big big leg on it, so they got the Colts buried at their own 8-yard line here. Worst for field position of the night for Meadowbrook. So I'm going to hand off the bop, and he's hit by two or three guys and falls down and forward to the 10. So again, two yard gain by him. Again, here you don't really want to make any mistakes. Try to run up the middle, get some yards, bounce it maybe, break a couple tackles, and get some yards. There's the old clap trying to get the defenders to jump off sides. Crooksville doesn't bite. Here's a snap screen to Norman, catches it. Breaks one tackle, breaks a second one. Now a host of ceramics coming 
tackle him at about the, looks like they're going to say the 17, maybe the 16. So it's either going to be a gain of seven, to six or seven, depending on the spot. And we're going to say a gain of seven as they're going to give it to the 17. Good play by Huey, just to, to catch it and throw it to Norman. So shotgun trips left. Outside run by Bop, and he's going to be met. And the Crooksville defense standing tall here. So it's going to be fourth and short. Yeah, it looked like there was some confusion in the backfield. It looked like everybody was going right, and uh, the running back went left. So we got fourth and one for Meadowbrook here. So big decision for the Colts, and uh, they're going for it here. It's a big play for both teams here. Handoff looks, fires a screen to Norman, caught first down, Matterbrook breaks one and tackled at the 25, but we got some yellow laundry on the field. Gutsy play call there, fourth and a yard on your own 18. And I, Matterbrook section cheering, and it is going to be on Crooksville, so you can tack on a few more yards on the play. So it's going to be an eight-yard completion. It's going to be an eight-yard completion to Norman. Looks like a 15-yard face mask penalty right mm -hmm. there. So now what looked like a tough time was so fourth and short and a big fourth down conversion and then 15 more yards tacked on as Huey's going to keep it on the read option and he's going to pick up a couple yards. He yeah, has a good job by Huey reading that defender. He went with Bop and he was able to keep it for a few yards. And the uh oh, and the, yeah, he's gonna say our, they ran the play before the uh, down mark. Are the first down markers were all set up and they're trying to figure out where they were supposed to go. I believe they got it all situated. Second eight snap. Huey's gonna keep it on a QB draw, and he fumbled it. Crooksville may have come up with it at the 45. They're going to know it's somehow. It looked like a Crooksville player jumped on it. I don't know if the scrum at the bottom, Meadowbrook pulled it away, but it's going to stay possession, luckily, for the Colts. It looked Norman looked like Norman took that direct snap right there. And he was just carrying it with one arm. And uh, it was, Crooksville was able to pull at it and uh, pop it loose. Again, third down here. They went for fourth and short on the 18. So, thinking of that, uh, looks for some positive play, some positive yards here on this play. They had the screen to Norman. Decides to throw it down the field. Hits Lowry. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Colts. 55-yard touchdown pass. Justice Huey to Braylon Lowry. And the Colts have struck first. Yeah, it looked like they was trying to set the screen up. Lowry broke deep, uh, open down the sideline, and Huey threw a great ball to him. Yeah, they, uh, like I said, they had Norman underneath on that little screen, and I'm sure Norman's been that go-to receiver. The uh, ceramics were kind of eyeing him down, which led to Lowry getting a little open, popping the top off that one, 55-yard touchdown. That's a little reminiscent of a – the last, it seems like, six years of the Colts that they've been able to hit that uh, big, long touchdown play. And Milam splits the uprights on the extra point, and the Colts have their first lead of the 2022 season, 7 and up and over the ceramics with 4.47 to go here in the third. We'll thank our sponsors, Graham Excavating, Main Screen Printing, West Falls Services, GMB Roofing, and Teal Dove Consulting. If you'd like to sponsor our live streams, contact Caleb on his Facebook at KGP Sports. He'll be more than happy to put you on the next one. So we talked all night about the great field position that Meadowbrook had. That right there was probably one of the, the worst field positions they had all night. They started on their own eight yard line and they was able to go 92 yards uh, for that touchdown. Yeah, great point there. Uh, 
we we talked about that they they've had the great field position been able to get the 30 to 30 and so sometimes it's nice to just go ahead and just hit a big play and uh don't worry about moving to that 30 yard line let's just pop a top off one and uh we haven't seen that much this year we've seen bits and pieces of where they've been able to hit some big plays but the the big touchdown pass which has been the repertoire of this meadowbrook uh offense for we're probably even the last 10 years you could say so right. first uh, first big uh, touchdown pass of the year got to be excited with that a little squib kick down to about the 24 I believe that's Cottrell as he's going to get knocked down loses his helmet going to be at the 39 looks like tackled there by Connor Kraft had a good tackle on 441 to go in the third quarter seven to nothing Colts yep it's going to be at the 39 <laughs> shotgun formation cultural quick screen that's Chevalier He's going to have a gain of six or seven on the play. So Chevalier was held catchless in the first half. So second half adjustment for the ceramics was like, let's get the ball to our playmaking receivers. He's cut two passes now here in the second half for 14 yards. And again, that's just another quick pass. Catch it, get out of your hands. Let your playmakers work. And here's another screen, and that's going to drop to the ground incomplete. We just talked about catch and get rid of it right there is another prime example. Third and three. Crooksville at their own 46. They've run back-to-back -back screens, quick screens. They hit on the first one for seven, threw an incomplete on the second one. So Cottrell looking. Fires pick. Oh, oh, dropped. Nick Norman almost made a house call on a pick six there. Read the ball perfectly. Just couldn't come down with it as it falls incomplete. Definitely a miscommunication there on Crooksville. The quarterback thought he was running just a little five-yard hitch, five-yard stop there. Uh, the receiver was breaking down the field. And like you said, luckily it was not picked. So it's going to be fourth and three. Crooksville to punt. They one hop on the kick, and what a booming punt that is. He's putting that one in the end zone off a two bounce. Here, he got probably 46 yards just on the air on that one as he did the old uh, Australian rules pun as he uh, ran over to the side and boomed it. So he ended up booming another 54-yard punt. So Brady Cottrell having a nice ball game at punter for, for the ceramics. That's tough in itself to, to field the short hop like that. Get it, and nothing just under three minutes left in the third quarter. A little muff snap. Huey keeps it, and he's going to get dragged down for a loss of about two. Well, I heard now that we may be officially back on now. I guess I, I uh, prematurely said we were back on. Caleb wasn't 100% sure if we were back on or not. He says 100% we're back on. We apologize for the technical difficulties, little computer glitch of some sort. The shenanigans of uh, people taking over his Facebook must have tried taking over his computer as that ball's airmailed down the middle of the field incomplete to Mason Blankenship. The offensive line did a good job there. It gave uh, Huey a, a nice pocket and it was able to give him time to actually unload one just so that the receivers were covered and just overthrew him. So... Not a bad miss, sir. Meadowbrook's going to be back to punt. And I believe this is only the second time that we've seen uh, Mr. Clint Denning punting, which unfortunately looking to score. Meadowbrook's only scored once. They've had the opportunities, haven't been able to finish up the drives. Got the big 55-yard strike from Huey to Lowry. 
on their last possession as Clint Denning booms one and it's going to pop up high and take a Meadowbrook bounce. Slowly roll to about the 40 yard line. So not to be outdone, Casey Clendenning is going to get 43 yards on that punt. So Crooksville is going to take over at their own 40 with 2.02 left in the third quarter. We'll thank our sponsors, Graham Excavating, Main Screen Printing, Westfall Service, Services, GB Roofing, and Teal Dove Consulting. And if you'd like to sponsor us here on the KGP Network, reach out to Caleb on his Facebook, KGP Sports, and you can contact him that way and uh, try to cut a deal with him. We're always looking for more, more sponsors and uh, people to promote within the community. I know streaming, it's an excellent way to watch the game and listen to the game. <laughs> oh, it's it's so awesome. Like basketball season, I'll, if I'm not doing one of my one of our Metabucks games, I would probably watch two or three different ones. Is that deep ball thrown down the field, down the right sidelines, incomplete. And we got a Metabuck Colt player down here. And I believe uh, we talked about the heat and cramping. I think we might have our first cramp up of the night. And let's give some credit to the uh, Crooksville players. That's some uh, good sportsmanship. There's about two or three of them are around there trying to help up the Meadowbrook player. I believe that's Chucky Dyer. So sportsmanship is still alive. I don't know if I played if I would uh, if I would help the other team. <laughs> but hey, you, you gotta respect it when the players do not. Wasn't Chucky Dyer? I don't think it was number fifty. Isaac Picari. I saw the five, I knew the five was there. So first pass incomplete, now it's second and 10 from their own 40 for the ceramics. Little screen, caught, breaks one, and then met by, I believe it was Norman, only a gain of two on the play. Yeah, Norman did a good job to escort him out of bounds, make sure he did not tackle him out of bounds to add another 15 yard penalty onto it. Uh, so he did, again, did a good job just uh, ushering him to the sideline. That was Blaze Hunter on the uh, one-yard gain. So, again, like we talked about, third and long situations. It seems like Crooksville's been in these situations the whole time. Yeah, just last drive is the exact same situation. Uh, they did not pick up yards for a first down and had to punt. Credit to Meadowbrook defense. They've really tightened up tonight and done their job as Cottrell's going to have to throw this. Got some separation. That's number one, Corbin Browning. He's going to step uh -huh. out of bounds. He may have made a house call, but he steps out of bounds at the 35 for a 24-yard gain. Now that is the biggest play from scrimmage for the ceramics. Yeah, Cottrell did a nice job there back in the pocket to escape in the rush, and uh, he acted like he was going to run, but uh, he was able to get enough on it to uh, – like you said, Browning right there and could have went to the house if he did not step out of bounds. So the ceramics got some momentum here as we got 139 to go, third quarter. Kind of getting some different guys involved. Cultural fakes the handoff, goes up the middle, and he's nowhere to go as that Meadowbrook defensive line puts him to the turf. Yeah, one thing uh, Meadowbrook defensive line inside backers, they've done a great job tonight plugging up that middle. Be second and ten at the Meadowbrook 35. Crooksville taking their time. Takes a snap, quick screen, dropped by I believe it was Chevalier. So it's a guess what? It's another third and long situation for the ceramics. Yeah, Farley did a good job there for the Colts. Even though he didn't catch it, uh, he was still uh, hammering down on him. And if he did caught it, he was going to be dropped right there on the spot. We've been saying Farley's name a lot the past couple games that we've covered. He's done a good job at that uh, outside backer position, making some plays for the Colts. Cottrell dropping back, has time, fires, incomplete. Had an open man just threw over him a little bit. 
And it's going to be fourth and ten now for the ceramics. You're right. Had a man running open. Uh, you just think was, was Cottrell thinking back of his mind, is that rush getting to me? Because it seems like every time he drops back the pass, he has a rush on him, and he's trying to run around. And, again, that might have uh, influenced his pass there. So fourth and ten at the Meadowbrook 35. It looks like uh, Crooksville's huddled up to go for it here. Fifty-one point one left in the third. Man in motion. Cottrell's going to roll out right. He's looking. He's firing, and it is off the hands, incomplete. Bounces around. It's going to be a turnover on downs for Crooksville. So Meadowbrook going to take over at their own 35, leading 7 0. 44.9 left in the third. We'll get a plug for our sponsors here again Graham Excavating, Main Screen Printing, West Falls Services, GB Roofing, and Teal Dove Consulting. If you want to sponsor the live streams or sponsor anything with Caleb's, reach out to him at KGP Sports on Facebook. And we. We'll make the deal for you. And anybody interested, we got some new merch here, too. I'm rocking a new uh, Caleb Graham Productions T-shirt this year, or this game, for the first time. So anytime Caleb hooks us up with free gear, I love it, as uh, Sam Bopp picks up a nice eight, nine-yard gain. Looks like it's going to be a gain of nine. I do have a flag on the play. I don't know what it is at the top side. Well, the first down marker still marked there. The officials have the ball set. None of them are huddling up to talk about what's going on. Huey's going over to talk to the referee and say, hey, what are we doing, Bally? Come on, we're ready to go. We're here to play a football game. He's like, okay, guys, come here. Let's huddle up. Well, the one official is talking with the Meadowbrook coaching staff a little bit there. Others are just standing around. This would be a good time for him to play the Jeopardy music as it looks like we got it solved. The play is not going to count at all as it's going to be first and five as the Colts are going to take the penalty instead of instead of the nine-yard game from Bob. So we do not have to put the yardage as Bob now has 22 carries for 81 yards on the night. Here's a screen to Norman. And we he somehow still up there. Looked like he was going down about the 42. Battled forward to the 44. Looks like another flag down here That's on the Colts sideline. The, by the location of it, you saw it was the defenders tackling Norman. So you got to think maybe there was a face mask or something. Or I guess it could have been a hold. And Holding, it is blocking the back, yeah. So the old one step forward, two steps back for the Colts as they had first and five from the 40. Now it's going to be first, or they had first and 10, and now it's going to be first and 11. Or they had first and first five, and now five. it's going to be first and 11. Yeah. We'll eventually get it right. <laughs> and there's a fake, the handoff hits Norman on the slant. And that's going to be a first down for the Colts. So a 12-yard gain there. That was a good play action in the backfield by Huey and Bopp, which they've been running all night and able to hit Norman in the middle. So Huey up to 134 yards passing on the night. Norman has seven catches, 72 yards on the night, and that's going to end the third quarter. So we'll thank our sponsors once again, Graham Excavating, Main Screen Printing, West Falls Services, g &B Roofing, and Teal Dove Consulting. If you'd like to sponsor Caleb or KGP Sports, reach out to him on the KG Sports Facebook website. We appreciate everything that our sponsors do for us so we can provide this live stream for you. The great thing is, is we got two of them going on tonight on the KGP Networks. We got this one with the Colts on top, seven to nothing over the ceramics. And the, what are we calling him now? The co-executive producer of KGP Sports, uh, Tom Strasser and the BT Hall of Famers, as he calls him, Chris Starr, 
are over on our sister channel for the Buckeye Trail game, and Buckeye Trail's playing Shenandoah. Last score was Buckeye Trail leading 7-0. to zero. Other scores of interest, Indian Valley 38, Cambridge 7. So we're going to see if we can find a Buckeye and uh, Buckeye Trail leads Shenandoah 13 to 12. That game is in the third quarter as we're about to start fourth quarter action here. Yeah, it's a big game for Tr Buckeye Trail because Shenandoah's 3 0 coming in. And it's definitely a big game for him. Also, it's the uh, first game on the new turf. So whenever you can get a win, is that's going to be a fine to Blankenship. Very similar to the pass play before that he hit uh, Norman. This time it's Blankenship. And that's going to be another Meadowbrook first down. Again, that was good play action in the backfield by Huey and Bop and able to find Blankenship open in the middle. That's an 11-yard gain. His first catch of the night is Meadowbrook quick play again. And I believe that's Evan Dyer battling forward for a gain of five or six on the play. So Meadowbrook again, they make a nice productive play and they run a little quick, get a little giddy up in their step, so to speak. Yeah, you see this is the pace that they want to go at and uh, maybe this will help their offense out. And here's another quick play, hand off the bop. He's going to get close to the first down marker, going to be just short. Should be a gain of four at least. Just the offense looks better and more fluid when they're hurrying up. They're getting fast to the ball and line up and run a play. Oh. And we got an offsides penalty, and that's going to give Meadowbrook the first down. Makes life a lot easier when the other team makes a mistake and gives you those uh, that free first down. They've been doing that all game. A little hand clap. I think they got somebody the first play. And, uh, they've been they've been doing that the years. The the patented Meadowbrook hand clap draws more offsides in high school football games, I think, than any high school team I, I think I have ever seen. I'm sure there's a stat somewhere historically <laughs> we can look up. Yeah, where's uh, <laughs> the stat gurus of the high school football? Here's a jump pass, oh. and it's intercepted through the hands of Lowry and into the hands of 25. Christian Browning, as he's racing up the left sideline, he's gonna be tackled at the 40 yard line. Huey had Lowry open, like you said, just did a little jump pass and he was unbalanced and uh, the ball wasn't accurate. And that's why uh, Crooksville was able to pick it off. So the ceramics have life here with 10.25 to go in the game. Uh, we get another Meadowbrook player cramping up here. Yeah, there's been a lot of success for Meadowbrook on that. Again, been running bop all night, uh, faking it to him, a little play action, and uh, guys were running wide open down the middle. So it's going to be first and 10 Crooksville, their own 41-yard line. 10.25 to go in the final frame here at Eugene Capers Field. As he adds his cramp, he's cramping up. And uh, by the way, it was hotter this morning, or this afternoon, this afternoon. I, I had a feeling we were gonna have some issues with cramping. We've been pretty fortunate that uh, we haven't had much issues through the first three weeks, but tonight we've seen a couple Meadowbrook players uh, cramp up and uh, that's probably one of the worst uh, things you can have happen on the football field. It's just like an instant pain where you just can't move. Yeah. And what a lot of people don't know if you haven't been on turf before is the turf is going to add 10 degrees. So let's say it was 80 degrees, you know, the time of kickoff. Well, the turf's going to be at least 90 degrees um, on the field just because of the rubber pellets in the turf. It's going to make it a lot hotter. Yeah, it absorbs that heat. And the, so that was 75. Casey Clendenning trotting off the field for Meadowbrook. So they definitely don't need him to go down because he's a – He's their current starting punter if, in case they need him to boot one big for him here late to win the field position battle. There's a handoff inside, and he's met immediately. I'm not sure who got that handoff for Crooksville. 
he got the handoff, and it just seemed like there was a swarm of people. I tried finding out who it was, but I never – it might have been Brady Cottrell. I know from Meadowbrook it was Vicari there on the tackle. It looks like he's playing the nose right there and did a real good job. So second and ten. And we're going to have a timeout, Meadowbrook. Coach Norman must have saw something that he didn't like, quickly told that uh, judge that was on the Meadowbrook sideline, let's uh, let's go and stop this play and let, the, let our team regroup and figure some things out here. So we'll thank our sponsors again, Graham Excavating, Main Screen Printing, West Falls Services, GB Roofing, and Teal Dove Consulting. So Kyle, uh, I know we came into this game, uh, two teams, uh, kind of struggling and early on especially struggling offensively as they combined for only 20 points through the first three weeks uh but uh for metabooks case you've got to give them credit they've been able to move the football but again it's just about finishing that finishing those drives if metabook finishes just two or three more of those drives you're talking about possibly 28 to even 30 point lead and you're talking about a running clock here in the fourth quarter i mean they've they've had Field Meadowbrook's had the momentum this whole game, but they just haven't been able to uh, punch through that wall, so to speak. Right, that, like you said, it's just going to – there's some seniors, juniors playing, sophomores, even freshmen playing. It's just a learned thing. It, it just don't happen overnight. And have been very successful the past five years um, with that, that, uh, you know, sometimes you just think it, it happens, but it don't happen. It, it is learned, and you have, to, you have to work for it. And we're going to have another flag on the play, and this one's going to be an illegal procedure on the ceramics. So they're going to knock themselves back five yards. So instead of second and 10, they're going to have a second and 15. And uh, you can see there's a little bit of frustration there as uh, their QB, Trenton Cottrell, just just a little upset when he got the snap and they, he saw the flag. Just, just seems like uh, when things go wrong, it seems like it kind of snowballs, especially for teams that have had some bad luck and have had some inexperience. It just seems like, one little mistake affects them for the next five or six plays, and, and that's unfortunately been the case a, a lot of times for these two teams. And here comes the pressure. Cottrell fires it over and intercepted. Diving pick by Jake, Jacob Burris. He overthrew Chevalier, and Burris made sure he didn't overthrow him as he picks off the pass. And Meadowbrook's defense coming through. Two big turnovers tonight. The fumble recovery by Blankenship. And now Burris with a big interception. And Meadowbrook's in business as they're going to take over at the Crooksville 49. Yeah, number 52 for Meadowbrook right there. Zayden Diego did a good job. Cottrell tried to escape, but 52 was right there in his face and uh, made him pass it too early. Yeah, definitely, like you say, good good, uh, good pressure from Diego getting in there, pressure, and uh, maybe making Cottrell think a little faster than he wanted to. Lowry in motion. And here's the handoff to Bob. He's got some room. Cuts back inside. He's got the first down. We've unfortunately got a flag at the 42. Bob's going to have the first down. But more than likely, the flag's probably going to bring it back. It's probably going to be a hold or a block in the back on the Colts. We'll see what the call is. And there it is, a hold against the Colts. He has a good job by 55. Uh, Chucky Dyer is able to get to the second level, get to the linebackers, and uh, that helps Bop uh, again. Had a good good yardage there on that run, but uh, it's all brought back. The good news is Bop gets the seven yards. The bad news, the Colts lost three on the hold, or lost ten on the hold, so it ends up being a loss of three. But they get the down as a replay. Here's Bop again, bounces outside, has a little bit of room, breaks one tackle, straddles the sideline, gets close to the first down marker. And 21, Mason Blankenship had a good edge block of that receiver and is able to help Bop get up to the sideline. So it's going to be a gain of 12, and with that run, Sam Bop breaks 100 yards rushing in a game for the first time this season. Again, they had a good yardage play, and what did the Colts offense do right there? They was back to the line of scrimmage ready to snap the ball. 
And unfortunately, a penalty is going to knock them back five yards. So instead of a second and one or second inches, it's going to be second and five or second and six. Pistol formation. Getting the play in. Snap to Huey. Hands it off to Bop. He's got the first and he's got more. There he goes. He is gone. 45 yards. For Sam Bop. That was a great run by Bop, but uh, when you have 74. Mitchell George pulling around, and uh, there's nowhere for him to go or nowhere for him to even block until he gets to the secondary. You know that's going to be a great play. So we talked about Meadowbrook going from going from 30 to 30 well. It seems like when they've got inside that 30, they've kind of stalled him out. Well, they found out here in the second half, let's hit some big plays and not worry about uh, getting inside the 30. As, uh, they had the 55-yard touchdown pass from Huey to Lowry in the third quarter. This time, Bop. 45 yards and they're going to go for two here as Milam passes incomplete uh, did a little shenanigans so to speak there on the fake extra point yeah I don't so, know if that was a bad snap or if it just is a design play it looked it looked about as designed as it could be as uh, Milam looked like he was as a perfect snap to him and he was ready to throw right so Madabuck now on top 13 to nothing here at the half, or not here at the half, with 9.07 left in the fourth quarter. So leading the way, Sam Bopp, 26 carries, 150 yards and a touchdown. So you said he might get 50 touches. Well, he's over halfway now, so we, I don't know if he's going to get quite the 50, but it seemed like that the, after that first, second drive where it was, Sam Bop left, Sam Bop right, Sam Bop up the middle. You're right, the first quarter, about what, the first 10 plays or so, he was running the ball. So the Colts have a two touchdown lead up 13 to nothing. 9.07 to go. We'll thank our sponsors, Graham Excavating, Main Screen Printing, Westfall Services, GMB Roofing, and Teal Dove Consulting. If you'd like to sponsor any of our live streams contact Caleb on our Facebook KGP Sports and he'll give you the details Meadowbrook kicking it off here Milam little onside kick kind of as Crixville's kind of running away from the ball a little bit there for whatever reason I believe the ceramics are going to come down with it. There's a load of bodies there, so Meadowbrook's running off the field, and they're not celebrating, so it's going to be Crooksville ball. Good field position at the 42-yard line. Looks like where they're going to mark it. Yeah, it looks like Crooksville with a hot potato or something. They didn't want to touch it, but finally somebody jumped on it. So they definitely uh, struggle to want to down that ball as they did on the uh, – punt there by Cottrell earlier as they let it roll into the end zone. They sit there and watch and I guess they wanted to just see how they wanted to see how good of a bounce this uh, turf has at uh, Eugene Capers Field. So shotgun here. Cottrell, screen. Chevalier calls it in. Makes one miss. And gets pulled down at the 44. So a gain of two. Good tackle there by Mason Blankenship number 21. It looked like he grabbed hold of his jersey or shoulder pattern and was able to bring him down. Second and eight. 840 and counting. Quirksville doesn't seem to be in too much of a hurry as their Cottrell's getting the plays from the sideline, running it back in. Old school style, as it used to be. The quarterback would run over to the coaching staff, get the play, and then call it in. Uh, Meadowbrook's a new age as they throw the different signals and everything out. Snap to Cultural looking down the field. Field fires deep, incomplete. Pass was intended to Corbin Browning. 
number 17, Jacob Burns. Burris did a great job on the coverage right there. Yeah, Burris had a big interception uh, on the last uh, series, which led then eventually to Bob's big 45-yard touchdown run. Again, I have Burris as a uh, freshman mm -hmm. on the roster right here. So. so definitely learning here. But I tell you what, come week 10 when Meadowbrook plays West Muskingum, He's no longer a freshman with the experience he's gained in those first nine weeks. That's right. Shotgun. Dropping back, looking. He's going to scramble out right. Doesn't see anybody, so he's going to take off. He's going to be close to a first down. Going to be just short, looks like by a couple of yards. Going to be right at midfield at the 50. We'll give Cottrell a gain of six on the play. Yeah, it looked like he got a little further than that, but uh, we'll take it. Fourth and short. So, so fourth and two, yeah, with 8.02 left of the game, you definitely have to go for it in this situation, and no hesitation whatsoever as Browning's running in with the play. Shotgun, Cottrell dropping back, looking. Fires down the field, well overthrown. Good decision by Blankenship there. He could have very easily picked that off, but he knew he wouldn't have got to the 50, so he lets it fall incomplete. And Meadowbrook's going to take over on downs right at midfield. Yeah, that was a great job by the secondary. He said Blankenship, you know, fourth and short, you're expecting a run, and they, they throw a deep ball, so good job by the secondary not falling asleep there. So we'll thank our sponsors, Graham Excavating, Main Screen Printing, Westfall Services, GB Roofing, and Teal Dove Consulting. Thank them for sponsoring us and providing this live stream for you. It's been a great night, and the Colts looking to crack the win column, leading 13-0. As Huey's going to keep it up the middle. He's going to have the first down. He's going to be down at about the 30. So that's going to be about a 20-yard gain. He has a good little draw with Huey. He set up the pass, about 1,000, 1,002 count, and he took off running. Design draw for the quarterback and able to get nice yardage. So right at the 30 now, Huey's going to hand it off to Bop, and Bop is met immediately. Big 74. Andrew Rollins, 6'2", 300 pounds. I don't know if he tackled bop or not i think bop just ran into him that kid's just such a big physical specimen bop had no place to go but the ground yeah good for Meadowbrook here to run the clock again being up 13 nothing qe takes a snap hands it off to bop bop looking cuts up picks up five more tough yards Bop did a great job right there. Number 27 from Crooksville. Jameson McCall is waiting for tackling. He said he's not going out there. Cut it up inside and pick up a couple more yards. So it's going to be third and five at the 25 Meadowbrook. You got to think this is probably four down territory for him as the clock continues to tick with 642 and counting. Looks like Norman's back Norm, to quarterback. Yep. Good call, Norman, at quarterback. He's going to keep it and pick up the first down. Should be a gain of seven on the play. So another Colts first down. is. Looks like Norman came off limping right there. So Landon Kuhn's going to check in for him, it looks like. Huey back in under center, shotgun, brings up Bop beside him, fakes the hand off the Bop, looking for yardage, and he's brought down at the about the 15 as we have a Crooksville player down now. Yeah, Huey did a good job, looked like he was met at the line of scrimmage, he was able to keep on turning his legs to, to make a couple out of it. I believe we might have a Crooksville player dealing with the cramping issues now. Never fun. So 
So what's what's the secret to not cramping up on a Friday night, Kyle? During the week, drinking your water, drinking your electrolytes. If you wait until Friday night or Friday during the day to drink your water, it's too late. You got to do it Wednesday night, Thursday night. And if you do that, eat bananas. Um, what do people say? Was it mustard? I, I've heard the shot of uh, shot of vinegar or a shot of pickle juice every there day helps too. Yeah, it just again, just like practice. You know, mm -hmm. you practice for the game throughout the week. Just the same thing with your water and your body. You got to take care of it through the week. If you're drinking pop, Mountain Dew, whatever you're drinking, that's not good for your body. But it tastes so good. It does taste <laughs> so good. That's why I keep in tip-top shape. I shape. I hardly drink pop anymore. No. That's why I'm a peak physical specimen now. <laughs> <laughs> Only in my dreams. There's a hand off the bump. He pumps his way forward to about the 11. Again, good. Just keep winding that clock. Again, you probably four down territory. Third and about four, third and five here. Pick up a few yards. Set yourself up for success on fourth down. As we got a little Bob Aram playing over at the Crooksville side. A little Beach Boys classic. Because we're going to have a offsides on Crooksville. And uh, the old Meadowbrook clap gets them. I believe that's the third time tonight Meadowbrook's been able to get Crooksville on the, on the clap. They're going to take over at the 8. Or they're going to mark it at the 7. First and goal Meadowbrook. First time they've been inside the 10-yard line tonight, I believe. Minus... Uh, Bop and Lowry running for the touchdown as Bop gets this carry, gets a yard, but he's getting pushed backwards, taken down. I think Daniel Chapman was on the initial tackle for Crooksville. Yeah, going to the previous play about jumping offside, you just got to have mental discipline. And again, that's preparation throughout the week. You know that Meadowbrook's going to do that. And, you know, it happens once. And it shouldn't happen again. You just got to be mentally disciplined. And again, that comes with age and the more games you play and experience. And for the record, that was carry number 30 for Bob. 20 more to go. He may get there. And play action. Huey rolling out to his right. Lowry was calling for it, but uh, he couldn't get it to him, and he's taken down, I believe it was 67, Ashton Childress on the sack for Crooksville. And that's going to be in from the seven, they're gonna mark it at the 16, so it's gonna be a nine yard loss on the play. Yeah, from up here, it looked like Lowry is open. Um, but I'm telling you, Huey, that wasn't a bad play for Huey. If you're not sure, just go ahead and take it and take a sack. So third and goal, 16 yard line, three receivers down to the bottom to the left, empty backfield. Actually four receivers as uh, they got the quads and Meadowbrook's gonna use a timeout. <laughs> Again, that last play, it wasn't bad for Huey to take a sack. Um, worst thing you want to do is throw an interception, again, down that close to the end zone. So, at least give yourself a fighting chance the next couple plays here. So 3.58 to go. In the game, Meadowbrook on top, 13-0. To Thank our sponsors, Graham Excavating, West Falls Services, Main Screen Printing, GMB Roofing, Teal Dove Consulting. We appreciate them and providing us the opportunity to do this sponsorship for the week so we can do this live stream for you uh, scores of interest Indian Valley on top of Cambridge 38 7 that one's with 446 to go in the fourth quarter our fellow KGP uh, employees of Tom Strasser and Chris Starr Watching the Shenandoah Zeps and the Buckeye Trail Warriors on the, and Shenandoah now leads that game 28 to 13, as that game has 9:27 left in the fourth quarter. We're back to action here at Eugene Capers Field, empty backfield. Huey looking, firing, a little quick out to Blankenship. It's going to be a gain of six. 
Huey did a good job right there. There's uh, never receivers were running deep. And they weren't open. Blankenship was open there for just a short little pass. But again, that's uh, now fourth down and manageable. Fourth and 11 instead of what, fourth and 15 or whatever they had before. Yeah, still a fourth and long situation though for the Colts and uh, Metabark's going to use, I believe, their second timeout of the night. So who knows, could we get another opportunity for a field goal opportunity? Obviously, Milam has the leg to make it from, it would be 28 yards from here. Thank our sponsors again real quick. Uh, Graham Excavating, Main Screen Printing, Westfall Services, GMB Roofing, and Teal Dove Consulting. So it looks like uh, Meadowbrook has made their decision. And it looks like they're going for it here in fourth and goal from the 11. Meadowbrook's done a good job on this job again, managing that clock. Uh, they've spent at least three to four minutes off this clock in the fourth quarter here. Bob to the right of Huey. Snaps, looking, steps up, taking off, looking, still throwing. Right corner, oh. just out of the diving reach of his receiver. I believe it was Lowry. It falls incomplete. It's going to go possession. Crooksville with 343 left in the game. Yeah, so, that, was, that was a good play. I mean, as he's able to step up through the pocket and just overthrew him just a little bit. And again, Meadowbrook moves that ball down into the red zone, but... Uh, can't quite finish the drive off with points. Like you said earlier, we already found the uh, the cure for it. Just big plays. Don't get yeah. to the 30. Yeah. Let's hit some 30, 40, 50 yard touchdowns and you don't have to worry about it. And that, and that obviously makes any team better. You look at like teams like the Buffalo Bills, how they played last night. They hit numerous big plays on the Rams. It just puts so much pressure on the other team. They're afraid of them taking the top off on them and uh, it's tough to dink and dump, get those five to 10 yards and just work your way out. That's not the way of, it may have been the football back in the eighties, but it's not the way of the 2022 football is that pass is completed for a gain of six. All right, like he's talking about, what's the Woody, Woody Hayes method? Three yards three, in a cloud yep, of three dust? Three yards in a cloud of dust. Here's a quick pass. Oh, off the hands of Chevalier. Got where they got rid of the ball quick, and that ball just seemed like it caught caught up to Chevalier quicker than he was expecting. Yeah, he is open. I don't know if he wasn't expecting it or, or what the deal was there, but he is open. I know players are taught to catch with their hands, but that ball got on him so quick that he tried catching it off of his uh, off his back shoulder. So exactly three minutes to go. Third and four, own 17 for Crooksville. You still think it's four down territory here for Crooksville? Oh, yeah, it has to be because you're, yep. you're down two possessions. You gotta, you you need a score on this drive. Here's a snap looking, fires over the middle and just out of the reach of his receiver. Man, there has been a lot of plays where Crooksville's had opportunities open guy and they've just missed him just been out of their outstretched arms yeah blaze hunter right there i don't know if quarterback thought he was going to sit down or continue on but uh blaze hunter i think saw uh, some colts flash in front of his face and didn't really want to extend it into the middle of the field and uh, kind of sat down on the quarterback there so here it is fourth and four fires it caught and that is going to be close to a first down. Can't really get a good view, and they're going to give him the first down. With the Christian Browning 25 on that catch there. Good job, because I had no clue who my, caught it. That's my youthful eyes. <laughs> well, I got four eyes with me, and I still didn't see it. <laughs> Quick pass out. Mm. Caught it. He, he was down, I believe. Yeah, he was. Blaze Hunter was down at the 25. So it's going to be a gain of four for the ceramics. You mentioned Jacob Burst a few times tonight. He was up there to make that tackle. 
Yeah, he got the big interception uh, earlier uh, this quarter that Take. led to Bob's touchdown. Take some good deep coverages. And right now, Meadowbrook doing a good job forcing him to throw things underneath, keep tackling him, keeping him in front of you, keeping the clock running as we're 2.15 and counting in the game. And this is fired deep and incomplete. Looking down the field to Christian Browning. So again, Mason Blankenship, good job, was just blanket coverage there. Looks like we had some extra curricular activity up here with the linemen. A few players just being sent to their sideline to cool off for a little bit. Two oh five left in the game. Third and five, Crooksville at their own 26-yard line. Crooksville's uh, coaching staff kind of having a word with the uh, official on their sideline. Snap and we're going to have a flag or a whistle. And the call is the call's going to be an offside on Meadowbrook. So it's going to make that third and five a first down. Again, just talking about a little bit of inexperience there. It's Seems like the older experienced kids, you know, it's hard to line up off sides. Mm -hmm. And I have that as the ninth penalty on Meadowbrook. There, it's at least their ninth penalty. I know it probably missed some. Cottrell looking around, rolls out, and we got a block in the back. I was wondering when the flag was going to be thrown. It finally is thrown. Cottrell has enough for the first down, but it's going to come back. It's a penalty on Crooksville. Yeah, number 50, Jace Thompson there for Crooksville, blocked in the back. And again, both these teams, seems like as uh, soon as they make something good happen, uh, make a mistake on one end, and it just kind of puts them behind. They just can't overcome their own mistakes at times. Meadowbrook's been able to hit a couple big plays, which just gave them a 13-0 lead, but Crooksville just hasn't been able to sustain drives. They've made a lot of... Uh, self-inflicting mistakes tonight. And they're just as simple as, you know, lining up offsides, not watching the ball on defense. And this is going to be a 15-yard penalty on it, so what turned out they had first and 10 at the 31. They're going to be first and 25 at the 16. Go one tip, step forward, two steps back. You don't get too far like that. That's right. Well, they actually have it at first and 28 because the flag was three yards behind the line of scrimmage, actually. So it's from the spot. Meadowbrook being generous, though, and they're going to give him five of those yards back. It's not quite Christmas season, folks, but... We're in the giving mood here at Eugene Capers Field. Still a minute 51 left in the fourth quarter here. Cottrell fires and just throws it behind his man incomplete. Little stop route by Hunter, but ball was thrown a little bit behind him. Second and 23, own 18 yard line, Crooksville possession, 149 to go. Meadowbrook has one timeout left, Crooksville has two. Cottrell looking, fires to the sideline, number five, catches it, that's Gunner Chevalier. <laughs> So he goes from the 18 to the 24, so it should be a gain of six on the play. Norman did a good, jo good job there on defense, able to attack him, 
tackle him and keep him in bounce and keep that clock clock running. So I got Chevalier with five catches, 28 yards, or six catches, 20, five catches, 28 yards. Number 50 there batted that ball down, Bakari. It was his hands up and just batted down. Isaac Bakari making a big play there, and it's going to be fourth and 17 for the ceramics. And that's Isaac Carey's been another kid who, uh, and his, he did go to Meadowbrook and then uh, went to Buckeye Trail and he moved back into the Meadowbrook district this year. And uh, he's made some plays, has been made some plays as a defensive lineman on this Colts defense. He's also the one who cramped earlier, so he must have that mm -hmm. uh, vinegar. Or yeah, he that took, that shot, took that shot of vinegar and he's ready to rock. There's fire pit and another one that, uh, Meadowbrook player jumps the route, just doesn't haul it in. And, and again, you, hey, you were going to be down, and, uh, and Burris is kind of mad at himself. But really, when he thinks about it, he could have picked it off and be down at the 38, 39-yard line. It's incomplete. They're going to have it at 24. So, Right, in hindsight, like you said, it is better that he dropped it. So that was good defense to knock it down and be in the right position, though. I know he's upset with himself, and he's probably thinking he could have stayed on his feet and uh, been racing into the end zone for a pick six. But sometimes uh, you're, you're getting the ball back no matter what. So Meadowbrook's probably going to take a knee here a couple times, and we're going to come away with a Colts 13-0 victory. Still think we're a few yard, or a few rushes away from uh, 50 touches for Bob. So I'll yeah, he's ready. he's only at 30 carries for 159 yards tonight. A great night for that young man. As the unfortunate thing here for Justice Huey, he's going to hurt his uh, yardage for the night with that knee. There's nothing better than the victory formation. Taking a the, knee. The best formation in football. So should have one more knee, and we should be done here at uh, Eugene Capers Field. The Colts are going to pick up a 13 to nothing victory. Huey takes the snap, and he's going to take another knee. And that should do it here from Meadowbrook High School. At Eugene Capers Field, the Meadowbrook Colts put a dent in the win column with a 13 to nothing victory. So, and that that definitely has definitely has to be a huge relief for the Meadowbrook coaching staff. It's just been kind of a real, real tough first three weeks, but being able to pick up the victory has to be a Great feeling for those young men. Yeah, it'd be a first win for Huey as a quarterback. You know, it's big for him. Again, big for the players. Uh, just big for, for the morale of the of the team, and hopefully we'll continue on that to next week. And next week, the Colts travel to Riverview, while Crooksville travels to Maysville. So the road doesn't get any easier for the other two teams. Uh, hey, and the good thing for Meadowbrook is, Guess who's the top of the MVL small school standings? Meadowbrook uh, 1 0 now in the small school MVL standings. So, three games were non uh, non league opponents. Uh, the losses to uh, Cambr Cambridge, Barnesville, and in the big school now, for now, Maysville. So, those don't count with the standings. Now, Meadowbrook 1 0 in the MVL as Crooksville drops to 0 and 1 in the MVL. So, we'll be back after a real quick break with final statistics and analysis here on the KGP Network.
Welcome back, Meadowbrook High School. The Colts are victorious, win number one on the 2022 season, earning an MVL, Muskingum Valley League small school victory over the Crooksville Ceramics by a score of 13 to nothing. Looking down at scoring, after both teams struggled in the first half, Meadowbrook had numerous opportunities, moved it well from 30 to 30, but couldn't quite punch it into the end zone. Both teams were scoreless the first half. Opening possession, or and it wasn't the opening possession in the second half, but late in the third quarter, Justice Huey connects on a deep pass to Braylon Lowry for 55 yards. Garrett Milam knocks it through the uprights to give the Colts a 7 0 lead. With 9.07 left in the game, Sam Bob pretty much puts the game on ice with a big 45-yard touchdown run as he broke free and raced into the end zone. The uh, little fake, I we believe it was a fake uh, extra point as uh, the snap went directly to Milam. Tried throwing it for the two-point conversion, failed. But Meadowbrook still led 13 to nothing at that point and held on the rest of the way for a 13 to nothing victory. For the Colts, as a team rushing, they finished with 46 carries, 190 yards. The main man of that rushing attack was Big Sam Bopp. 30 carries, 159 yards in the touchdown. Nick Norman had three carries, 25 yards. And Justice Huey had 13 carries for six yards. Passing-wise, Justice Huey put up a good game. 13-22 passing, 153 yards and a touchdown. Leading receiver was Nick Norman, seven catches, 72 yards. Braylon Lowry had the big 55-yard touchdown reception with two catches for 16 yards each was Evan Dyer and Mason Blankenship. One catch for four yards for Landon Kuhn and one catch negative four yards for Cooper McManaway. For the visitors, it was a struggle all night for Crooksville. Rushing-wise, 18 carries, 28 yards. And uh, here's the thing, Cottrell led him with rushing with 29 yards on eight carries. So everybody else combined for a loss of one. So really the Meadowbrook defense was clutch up front, stopping him immediately. Cottrell finished 12 of 27 passing, or 12, yeah, 12 of 27 passing for 76 yards. Chevalier had five catches, 28 yards. Corbin Browning finished two catches for 28 yards. Blaze Hunter had three catches for 11 yards, and Jacob Hammer had a nine-yard reception. So that's the statistics of the game as Meadowbrook picks up win number one and takes a lead, at least for a tie of the league, because I'm sure some other teams won, in the small school division as they're 1-0. That started off 0-3 with a non-small school MVL game. So obviously winning this game. They still have a goal that they probably had on their calendar day one is winning the MVL and defending the MVL as they're the two-time champions since they've uh, joined the MVL. Kyle, now looking back to game, uh, what's what's some of the things that kind of stood out for you tonight uh, on Meadowbrook's play? Well, you mentioned the, the defense did a tremendous job last night on what to hold them under. A, the rushing definitely under, what, 50 yards and passing is definitely under 100 yards. Uh, so that's, that's an amazing job anytime you can do that. Then uh, on offense, you know, we we talked about before the game, Bob getting the rushes and getting the touches, on, and he said it. He set it up, you know. Um, what is not seen in the in the stats are the play actions. You know, get the defense biting up, uh, and then that's when you can hit, and hit uh, Lowry down the field for that big strike. And again, Norman had a lot of uh, play action passes that he caught over the middle. Um, but again, it's all set up by Bob and his ability to run. And we talked about the big plays, like over the past few years. It seems like Meadowbrook's had numerous guys uh, making big plays, whether it was a big rushing play or a big touchdown pass. And really, through those first three weeks, we haven't seen those big plays. But both touchdowns Meadowbrook had, that two plays combined for 100 yards with the 55-yard touchdown reception to Braylon uh, Lowry and the 45-yard touchdown run by Bop. How nice is it to be able to get those big plays? It seems like it takes a lot of pressure off of your team. Like you said earlier, it's tough to put a 10-play drive together, even an 8-play drive. You know, when you can do that 4-play and a big play, it, like you said, it takes all the pressure off the offense, especially a young quarterback, uh, to do so. So, it, you know, big plays are awesome. I, I think everybody knows that. But. 
Yeah, and uh, we got an exciting weekend here because it's week one of the NFL season. So that means week one of fantasy football, Kyle. I know uh, you and uh, Strasser are in the same league. I'm I'm really excited as I'm playing my buddy Sean Mitchell this week, and we start four receivers in our league. And um, I'm so fortunate enough that two of his receivers played last night in Cooper Cup and uh, Gabe Davis, and I believe I'm already down forty something to nothing. So I'm I'm hoping that. Uh, my team shows up and shows out on Sunday and if I have some going on Monday. But looking at your fantasy team, how's the, how's the team suiting up uh, this year? I also had Cooper Cup last night going, so he uh, gets me off on a good direction. And uh, we'll see about the rest of the team. You know, uh, fantasy, any kind of sports I got, there's uh, a lot of luck involved. Mm -hmm. So Tommy may claim he's, he's the champ, or, but there's definitely a lot of luck. Well, I know last year he uh, he had a lot of bad luck going his way, and uh, I was fortunate enough last year uh, we do it on Yahoo, and uh, of course for the second straight year Yahoo said my draft was terrible, but they they said my draft was terrible last year, and uh, I ended up hoisting the trophy and how I was only going to win one game during the season in projections. So don't buy into what the experts say, like those ESPN analysts bashing my Chicago Bears. <laughs> Let's just see. Let's find out on the fields what I say. So that's going to do it here for us at Eugene Capers Field. Again, final score, Meadowbrook 13, Crooksville 0. Congratulations to Coach Norman and the young Meadowbrook Colts, the first win of the 2022 season. For Caleb Graham producing the game, Carson Todd and Brittany Rowe down on the sidelines taking pictures. KGP Rookie Analyst of the Year, Kyle Winland. I'm Darren McCullough. Good night and enjoy the rest of your weekend.